So this is part two of two of my little series, if you can even call it that, on New Age spirituality. In the first one, I just kind of talked about some general problems with New Age spirituality, like spiritual bypassing, uh, self-centeredness and manifestation, spiritual materialism. And in this one, I'm going to talk about problems that have more to do with influencers. So if you haven't seen that one and want to check it out, I'll leave a link below. Um, but yeah, I wanted to make this video because New Age spirituality has definitely had really good effects on my life. I am not against it at all, okay? But I do think there are many problems with the way that some people promote certain New Age ideas and practices that I know are not you know, they did not start for New Age spirituality, but they are part of kind of the common view of it. You know, things like the law of attraction, oneness, crystals, uh, manifestation, yoga, meditation, the list goes on. And so I'm not saying that any of the things that I'm going to talk about in this video are things that are like the core teachings of New Age spirituality. They're just things that are promoted and um, people myself, people in my community posts where I asked for people's experiences and opinions, um, they're just things that we and I'm sure a lot of other people have experienced and found to be harmful in some situations. The reason I think it's so important to talk about influencers in these types of videos that I make is that influencers have a lot of influence, obviously. And therefore, the things they preach have a much larger impact because they can reach so many people. And a lot of times they have a much more drastic impact because people feel a connection through them, through like the parasocial relationship that happens between a creator and a viewer on social media platforms. And a lot of people think that the influencer is, of course, very wise and knowledgeable and therefore they should be listened to. And then a lot of people, once they get more into it, you know, it's not really common to be into new age things. And so a lot of people might feel alone in their beliefs and their perceptions because they don't maybe know anyone in their real life who looks at things the same way as them. And so they kind of form a closer parasocial relationship with influencers who share many of their same beliefs. This can sometimes lead to viewers just kind of adopting like all of an influencer's beliefs because they feel understood through them and they just believe again that they're very wise and knowledgeable um, and maybe they don't question as much as they should or realize that this person might not be right about everything that they talk about, they might not have the absolute truth of the universe. So even if these people say, hey, I'm not a guru, you know, some may still unconsciously view them as such. And that leads me into the first problem. A lot of them, you know, of course, if they're sharing their spiritual beliefs, they of course believe in them, but they will often speak as if what they're saying is absolute truth, and it's just not. They're sharing what they've learned through conversations, experiences, books, podcasts, etc. But if they had read different books and had different experiences and conversations, they might believe something completely different. And so to completely adopt other people's perspectives because you think they know what they're talking about is maybe not the wisest decision because they'll probably change their beliefs over time. I mean, hopefully, you know, most people as they age, as they grow and learn more, their beliefs kind of change. So it's probably not best to look up to any influencer as like someone who is preaching the absolute truth and they know what they're talking about because they have a million subscribers. And also, if you find yourself believing in every single thing that a person says like this i feel like this goes for anything like if you have agreed with every single thing i've ever said in any of my videos that's probably not good like you should probably disagree with a few things that's just kind of normal and natural so if you're finding yourself never disagreeing with a single thing then it's maybe possible maybe you should consider if you are like looking up to the person a little too much next just because someone has done psychedelics does not mean they're like this enlightened master of life that has the wisdom of some 95 year old sage you know um don't get me wrong psychedelics can have benefits okay if anyone goes down there to the comments and is like but psychedelics can blah blah, blah. i know i promise i know please do not twist my words this happened in the last video and it drives me nuts but they can also be harmful and the problem is a lot of these people who promote them never talk about the potential harm that they can cause i don't know if they're aware of the potential dangers or just feel like listing them would make psychedelics seem less spiritual you know they like to call them sacred plant medicines instead of psychedelics like kind of a spiritual euphemism in a way if there's such a thing um, and so you, they'll use that to refer to usually like ayahuasca peyote 
LSD, mushrooms. I mentioned this in my last video. Mushrooms are not a plant, okay? But I guess sacred fungus medicine doesn't really have the same ring to it. <laughs> Overall, the promotion of psychedelic use with no disclaimers for potential harm that it can cause is extremely problematic, especially because a lot of people who are gonna see these things are not going to know anything about psychedelics. They're not going to have researched them. They're probably not gonna go and re research them because these people don't encourage that. If they have access to them, they're probably just gonna go out and do them. And it's especially dangerous for people who have never used them before because they have no idea what that kind of experience could be like. They have no idea how they'll react to them. And even people who have done them before have no idea how each trip is going to go. They don't talk about having a sober person with you to make sure you stay safe and don't make any irrational decisions, which is possible to happen because your mind, it, you're in an altered state of mind. They act like because there are benefits, because they've experienced benefits, then there's no, there's nothing to worry about, you know, side effects, whatever, potential dangers, whatever. But you're taking a hallucinogen. It is going to cause you to hallucinate. It can cause you to be confused or delusional or paranoid and you have no idea what that could lead you to do. They don't make any disclaimers about people with medical conditions or mental health problems taking them. They don't make any disclaimers about people with physical health problems taking them. Pe teenagers, you know, young people whose brains are not fully developed. They make it seem like it's not possible to get addicted to psychedelics, which is not true at all. They act like using psychedelics on a frequent basis is like the most spiritual and enlightening thing to do, completely ignoring the fact that uh, long-term psychedelic use can have negative effects on you. Just want to make a quick disclaimer, I'm not claiming that every single person who has ever promoted psychedelic use has never made any disclaimers, I'm just talking about those who don't. And that's the same for every subject in this video, I'm not claiming that every single person does this. But if you say anything against psychedelics, then you're just close-minded and not woke enough. Actually, everyone who does not have the same exact perspective on everything as them is just not as woke as them. Their third eye hasn't been opened because they use fluoridated toothpaste, so it's calcifying their pineal gland, which makes you unable to be woke. Really, I, I know a lot of people, myself included, get this feeling that new age spirituality has basically become a competition of like, who is the wokest? I mean, I'm not some like egoless enlightened person, but I do feel like there is so much egotism within New Age spirituality, but it's just covered up by the word spiritual. Everything that a person does that would be seen as egotistical is actually spiritual, you know? And also, I really like that there is, you know, a big focus on being compassionate and com compassionate communication in New Age stuff, but I think some people kind of use this in like a condescending way. Like if you say anything that they don't think is woke enough, they'll say like, oh, I only have compassion for you, sending love and light. Maybe it would have been best in my previous video because I think it's something that's a lot easier to hide in like videos. But I just know that from conversations I've had with people and comments I've seen that people who act like, oh, you know, it's all love, like I have nothing but love for you, we are all one, blah, blah, blah. At the same time, often speak in like this tone of spiritual superiority and very holier than thou attitude. This is of course something that happens in all forms of spirituality and religion, but it's just it's just an odd thing and I think it's something to be aware of if you're into these things. Like if you're coming off in this way where it's like, oh, I'm so much better than you, I feel so bad for you because you're so brainwashed by mainstream media. Oh, sending love. I hope one day you wake up and you understand, you know, we're all on our own journeys. One of my favorites is like, oh, you're, you're exactly where you need to be. You know, you're not ready for this information yet, but once you are, then you'll understand where I'm coming from. It's just like, you're so stupid and not woke that your brain just can't possibly comprehend all this information that I know about and that I'm an expert about and that my brain can comprehend. And there's a lot of fake lovey-doveyness. I mean, I do feel like there's, of course, a lot of people who really make an ever effort to love everyone and to have compassion. And I know that when you're on a spiritual journey, I mean, it's not like you learn about spirituality one day and the next day you're completely compassionate. But I know from firsthand experience 
that there are many people who act like they are like these beings of compassion and yet if you say anything that they disagree with, if you say, say anything that they think is hate, which is anything that is not absolute praise, they don't act as lovey-dovey as they come off on their Instagram pages or their YouTube channels. Like one example that I'm not gonna go into too much because I'm gonna talk about it in a future video is that I've been blocked on Instagram by multiple people who might not necessarily be like spiritual influencers but do talk about spirituality and are kind of sort of influencers um, just for asking them a, a single question in a very polite and respectful way. So I'll actually like talk about that and show the screenshots in my video about the breakaway movement, which won't be out for a while. Um, but let me tell you, there have been more experiences than just those, but like I promise that these pe a lot of these people, I shouldn't say a lot, at least some, okay? At least some are not as lovey-dovey and compassionate as they pretend to be. Some of them tend to think that their spiritual beliefs mean that they are knowledgeable about everything. Um, and this is especially harmful when it comes to like things related to diet and physical health. Many people who are into the New Age movement are anti-vax, they're anti-modern medicine, they're anti-everything that isn't natural. Appeal to nature fallacies are all too common and it feels like some people will take like the experiences of two people they know who cured their eczema through, gosh, I don't know, like a mixture of thieves, essential oil, and <laughs> caterpillar fur, or something completely random, and use that as proof that alternative medicine is good, modern medicine is bad, even though I'm pretty sure they're completely unaware and uneducated of the efficacy of both solutions, the random ones, and like the actual things that doctors give out. Just because modern medicine hasn't worked for some people does not mean it is like this evil thing because I guarantee you alt-med has not worked for everyone either. One example of like dietary related things that some of these people will claim is Sadguru. Sadguru, I don't know how to say his name, but he has said things like, oh you know, you shouldn't eat onions and garlic because they're bad, basically. That's like a shortened version of it. Um, yet he has never mentioned any studies, there has never been any links in descriptions to any of those studies. I've tried to look up onions and garlic and like the ways that he said they are bad and I could not find literally anything about them. Anything. I think it was like, garlic will give you anxiety or something. But he speaks as if what he is saying is fact and people will believe him because they look up to him as this guru sad guru. But at the same time, people don't care that he's not presenting any research because you know, I don't mean this in a mean way, but it's just the fact of the matter that a lot of people who are into new age spirituality do not care about evidence, do not care about research. They care about anecdotes. That's been my experience. At least I've had multiple people get mad at me because I want evidence for things. They don't really care about anything that comes out of the mouth of anyone who they don't see as spiritual. So they don't care what doctors have to say. They don't care what scientists have to say or dietitians. They care about, you know, what medical medium has to say, what sad guru has to say, what random naturopaths and gurus and Eastern healers have to say. Some people can be really good at one thing, but that doesn't mean you should take their advice on everything. They might speak in a compassionate way and give people a place to kind of connect with like-minded people, and that's all great. But that doesn't mean that their spiritual teachings about the, you know, the origin of the universe or the existence of a soul is correct or that they know what they're talking about at all. That doesn't mean that what they, the foods they say you should eat are what you should actually eat and the foods they say you should avoid are what they you should actually avoid. Let's talk about the current situation, the pandemic. You know, a lot of them have thought it was a great idea to whip out their cameras and start blabbering on about whatever conspiracy theories they have decided is the cause of this. I understand as well with conspiracy theories, the CIA made that term back in the 1980s to keep people deterred from questioning re their government, from questioning reality in general as well. Again, they state everything as fact, even if what they're saying is factually incorrect or very hard to believe, like quite a stretch unless you only do one-sided or no-sided research. Like there's this one guy who I screenshotted his Instagram stories of from I think like maybe two months ago. Every time I think of it, it just hurts my brain. He literally, this guy literally thinks, or at least at that time, guaranteed, he probably still does. He literally thinks that the CV is 
cystic fibrosis. Like he thinks that everyone who's being diagnosed with CV actually has cystic fibrosis. And that's what it is. Like that's what the CV is. <laughs> because because they sound the same. And as you probably know, many of them have decided that 5G is the reason for the pandemic. And I guarantee approximately zero of them have done more than just one side of research because they probably just saw some chart on a stay-at-home mom blog that the countries with the highest rates of CV also have the most 5G towers and bam, that's all they really need to convince them. Or they'll say this like really vague stuff, like there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. There's a collective shift in consciousness going on. There's a massive awakening taking place right now, which I think is super interesting because I feel like these people only see things from their perspective, where they are, when they're living, and like how things affect them. Because like did the Black Plague and the Spanish flu, you know, cause some mass awakening and make everyone more spiritual and enlightened? I don't think so. Have any pandemics in developing countries that didn't spread to Western countries caused some huge shift in consciousness? No, because they don't think about those places. These people who you know are mostly from the US because no one does ridiculous, easily debunked conspiracy theories like we do, um, I don't think they'd have the same perspective on things. Understanding that there's a great awakening happening. This has been prophesized for thousands of years and it's finally happening. And uh, some of the things that may happen, just to give a basis before I get into the myths, is there, we could have that of a complete turnaround in our government. Which government? There's hundreds of them. Obviously the US because people from the US only think about the US. Trust me, I've lived in the US for 19 years. We don't think about anyone else. We don't think about any other government. We think that the world revolves around us. But yet there's supposed to be some massive awakening taking place, but we're only talking about one country out of over 200. But because this has impacted them and the Western world well, then there must be something else going on and it must be causing this huge shift in everything, in spirituality. And suddenly now everyone is gonna, you know, convert to new age spirituality and become hippies and nudists and environmentalists and vegans and everyone's gonna stop watching mainstream news and they're gonna get Gaia TV and they're gonna stop buying regular self-care products and instead everyone's gonna shop on Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop website. I could be wrong, but I personally don't think that's gonna happen because, you know, entrepreneurs are like online entrepreneurs are another group who think that everyone's gonna become an online entrepreneur after this pandemic because they finally realize that like the traditional system doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. These people live in their own little bubbles where they think that everything in the world and everyone else's lives are suddenly gonna start revolving around the same things that they're into and I don't see that happening personally. Next, a lot of them talk about letting go of the ego yet it kind of comes off as hypocritical when all of their pictures on Instagram are of them half naked. Like I get the empowerment aspect, I do, I promise. I understand the empowerment aspect. But first of all, you can be empowered in your body and in your appearance and everything and not have to post about it online. And second of all, they're usually never pairing it with a message about empowerment. Sometimes people are and that's cool, but from the perspective of somebody who is an influencer myself, it's hard for me to not think that people who constantly post pictures of things that are what get likes on Instagram are not doing that because they know it gets likes. I mean, I just don't believe that. And I also find it weird that a lot of these people promote the message of like, you are not your body. And a lot of them come from backgrounds of having eating disorders. And I recognize that eating disorders are caused by many different things, but I'm sure some of them, it was kind of caused by societal pressures to look perfect, you know, to be skinny and all that kind of stuff. And so now it's like, I, to me, it seems kind of weird that people who have struggled with that in the past and probably compared themselves to girls who look like what they do now and do what they do now, which is just posting pictures of themselves in bikinis all the time, I feel like that's not really a good message to put out there to people when you yourself have experienced insecurities that really negatively affected your life due to similar things probably i don't know i feel like if you if you really want to kind of promote empowerment maybe talk about it when you're posting pictures of your body also i understand that everyone has insecurities but a lot of these girls who talk about empowerment and like loving your body and stuff have 
literally like perfect bodies in society's standards. I feel like it's much more empowering to see somebody posting about imperfections about their body and like how they have learned to love those rather than people who most people look at as having like perfect bodies. To me, I don't know, it's just not that inspirational. I also find it weird when these spiritual people seem to be really materialistic, like something about it just doesn't add up. It's kind of like those rich Christian megachurch pastors who have their own private jets. Like it's just kind of hypocritical. How much money did you pay for Tyler Perry's Gulfstream jet, for example? Tyler's one of the greatest guys. He made it, he made that airplane so cheap for me, I couldn't help but buy it. Like there's just something contradictory about it, you know? Somebody who I don't really know exactly like all of what he talks about is Aaron Doty. I don't know if I pronounced that right. I, I've not watched very many of his videos, but the first one I clicked on a couple weeks ago, he's, show, he's like walking around his house and he says it's his house and it looks huge. It looks like a mansion. It looks very expensive, richy, extravagant, luxurious. He has this huge chandelier hanging from the ceiling. Like, like I'm sure he's a nice guy. Okay, I'm sure he enjoys helping people, but at the same time, I'm pretty sure he is very into the big bucks that he's clearly making from his uh, stuff that he sells online and his videos and all that kind of stuff. Like, it's great to be able to make a comfortable living wage off of doing what you love and helping people online. I think that's great, but it's like, to proclaim to be all spiritual, but at the same time live in what looks like a mansion, it seems weird. Like, I'm not saying if you live in a mansion, you're not spiritual. Like, it's not me who determines whether or not someone's spiritual, but it's just odd. And I think it's good to pay attention to what these people are spending their money on. In my opinion, it shows what they value most. But at the same time, I know how law of attraction works and I know that me saying all this means that I just have a bad money mindset. I think majority of these people are not frauds, you know? And so they want to help people. They want to do good and promote positive messages and all that stuff, um, but I think that for some this can lead to like not sharing flaws. Maybe some people just don't want to. They don't want to share the bad parts of their lives and that's completely fine. Nobody should feel like they have to share all that stuff, but I've talked about this in many videos before. Just be aware that like what you see is not reality. These people might be struggling with things that you're not aware of. They might not be as enlightened and at peace as they seem online. They might just be really good at talking about things. You know, you can like be good at talking about things that you do not practice very much yourself. I also feel like it's really easy to look at, like compare yourself to these people and feel like you're not spiritual enough or you'll never be spiritual enough because they seem so knowledgeable. They have 400 videos about all these different things that you find so much inspiration from and, and you'll never get to this place where you're like as wise as you wanna be because there's always something to work on and that's true, you know? But just be aware that they might not be as perfect as they seem online. And so don't compare yourself to them, take inspiration, but don't you know look at their lives and think, oh, I wish I had this. I wish I was as this as them. It's not beneficial and it might not even be an accurate comparison to the actuality of their self for their life. So in conclusion, I definitely feel like there's a lot of great helpful content out there regarding spirituality and new age stuff, um, but I do feel like a lot of it could benefit from a bit of logic and rationality. I don't think that hurts. I think a lot of people just kind of say and do whatever feels good and resonates with them, and I get that to an extent, but whatever resonates with you is not automatically truth or reality. Think about the things you believe, why you believe in them, how you started believing in them, and in the future being more conscious of what you're choosing, like what practices and beliefs you're choosing to bring into your life and what things you're viewing online.